Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. I'm here with Diana to talk about Neverland, the Impossible Island, a 5e RPG based on the classic works of J.M. Barry. Tell us about this. So this is a, a 5e d d game using the setting of Peter Pan. Yes, it, it, it's really actually a full setting guide. So um, it's not like a one module adventure or anything like that, although there is a uh, there is one adventure in the end of the book, uh, but it is a full setting guide meant to let your GM run a game in this setting of Neverland with whatever they have uh, going on. Why the setting? Of all the settings you could have picked to, to write about and create, what made you choose this one? Um, I have been ridiculously obsessed with Peter Pan, all, all things Peter Pan, but, uh, specifically J.M. Barry's novel, Peter Pan, since I was a teenager. Uh, basically, when I was a kid, I loved it, you know, the way all kids do, the, the Mary Martin musical and Disney. And then when I was a teenager, I went back and I read the novel for the first time and had this kind of lightning strike of like, this is not about what I thought it was about at all this is much better than what I remember. <laughs> um, and it turns out that there are a lot of differences between what made it to the Disney cut and what made it to the stage play than what is in this novel. Um, and I became very obsessed with that, like overthinking it at times and hypothesizing about it and letting my brain just run wild about what Neverland is, what Peter Pan is, et cetera, et cetera. So what happened is that, you know, over the years I got really into gaming, um, starting with, you know, Vampire the Masquerade and the World of Darkness era, and then finding my way to D&D. My podcast co-host, uh, co-host of Femsplained, after one episode where we went on a big long tangent about Peter Pan and I basically told her all the things in my head about it. Uh, she was like, so your two favorite things in this world are RPGs and Peter Pan. Why do you not just? And uh, so I did, that's, that's what I did. Okay. So <laughs> you, you've taken something that inspired you when you were younger, and now you're using it to, in a way, inspire others so that they can enjoy the, the Peter Pan world in a way. Uh, I find that really fascinating. I hope so. <laughs> I, I love the reinvention of myths. I love how how uh, how how we take something from the past and then our society uh, reinterprets them, uh, um, hopefully for the better, mostly for the better. Um, mm -hmm. And so with with this, what, what did you do differently? Like what's different? How how different from this your setting is from I guess the uh, from either Peter Pan movies or the Peter Pan book? What can people expect? Sure. Well, on face level, uh, the the first differences are that everybody's grown up. There's no it, it doesn't necessitate that you be kids in Neverland. Um, Pan and the Lost Ones, because it's not just boys, obviously. Uh, and all of the other inhabitants of Neverland are all ages. It's just, a, you know, a normal place where a normal range of, of people of all ages live. Um, that I mostly did so that playing it doesn't have to be really awkward with a bunch of grown-ups trying to pretend to be kids if they don't feel comfortable doing that. Deeper levels, uh, the things that are different is some of the lore. I took things that J.M. Barry sort of hinted at a very, very lightly, and I extrapolated it and decided to make it extremely true. Um, one thing being, you know, the lore of what Neverland is um, and who Pan is. And uh, there are some connections there that Jane Barry drops that sort of sprinkle the idea that it's a fey thing. And so I decided to run with that. Uh, let's talk about um, the the like the problematic stuff that Peter Pan, the, the original story, has. Now this one has taken out a lot of you've taken all of that out. Um, yeah. Did, did you yeah. was that challenging to do for you? No, because frankly, it added 
nothing to the story for J.M. Barry to just insert his own, you know, uh, racial biases that he had uh, into the story. Um, and it, it, it took nothing away to take it out, uh, frankly. Um, obviously, Lily is still a character. Uh, she is still in there and she is still her own identity. Um, but having caricatures of tribes, uh, things like that, um, aren't necessary, don't add anything to the story, and only exist to hurt people, really. So there's just, I just found it easy to just pluck it out and throw it away. Do you find um, creating rules or anything like that um, difficult, like creating the, like the, uh, the NPCs, uh, the uh, or some of the um, antagonists in this uh, in this setting. Some of them were a little bit tricky. Uh, I would say that the fairies were tricky. Tinkerbell, in particular, uh, there are fairy stats that float around uh, in Five E from place to place. Uh, fairies and pixies and and fae like things, and I wound up like hodgepodging them all together because nothing quite made sense for what Tinkerbell is supposed to be. So some parts were tricky, other parts were relatively easy. Um, it became easier once we got into like the playtest era because at that point you're you're basically trying it out and when it doesn't work you just oh, you're right you can fill it in with, with whatever worked. So I, I mean that part was not so bad. Okay. And what would you say is the, the, the most fun aspect about creating this game? Was there uh, feedback you heard from players that really surprised you? Yeah. Um, people have told me a lot that like there was a lot of freedom in it uh, to imagine whatever you wanted to be and to imagine your own story. And that's, I mean... That's all that there is to to RPGs for me, you know, is trying to create something with your friends that's totally new and, and totally you and nothing else. Tell us about the art uh, that you have in here. Um, who did you get to, to work with you? Oh my gosh. Okay, we have three artists that worked with me on Neverland, all amazing and all very unique. So the cover art is done by Tough Tank Art, who it's in the name. It's like almost a match made in heaven. Like she's also really into Peter Pan. Uh, she cosplays Tinkerbell beautifully, like really adorable. Um, and her art is stunning. And she heard the concept and just didn't need anything else from me. She just did it. It was beautiful. Um, and then we had uh, animation art, who I really trusted just based on her style of art to do justice for Lily, because just because I'm taking out the um, the stereotypes of that character, I didn't want to erase her entirely or erase her identity entirely, because I find that that's probably just like the other side of being disrespectful. So. Um, so she really took a lot of care in the representation of that character and did a great job with that. Um, and then Glimmeron art is one of the more interesting ones because, she, uh, so they did the art for Pan and I did not initially commission them for it. Initially, they were watching the stream of our playtest and drew it uh, like as an inspired by the description of Pan that we had in the game. And they sent it to me over Twitter and I was like, that's it, that's the one, I want that. Let me give you money, <laughs> please, because it's perfect. Um, and I'm very thankful that they agreed to that. So um, so that is, uh, that's how we got the art for Neverland. Okay, so I, I, I... This book is about 20 pages, no, 26 pages. Um, it's it's only, well, I think $5 on drive through RPG, which is a steal. Um, yeah. Uh, are you planning to do more material in the future for this? I mean, it, it's, such a, it's such a great beginning. 
With this, um, the last thing that I am doing is I am converting it to D10 Storyteller System, which is almost done. Um, once that's done, I will be adding that as a free, you know, insert. I uh, I did add, um, you know, an adventure to the end. I added a couple more things to the novel after its initial release. Um, uh, the initial book after the release. And I think once I release that insert, I'm kind of gonna close the chapter on that. And of course, anybody who is heavenly enough to make adventures for it, like is, is obviously welcome to. <laughs> um, and I would love to see them all and hear about them all, all the time forever. Um, but after that, I think I'll probably move on to other things. Okay, um, something I forgot to ask you before. Would you say this our, this system is for uh, for anyone? Is it is it mainly for kids? I know sometimes we hear the word Peter Pan or anything like that. People think made made for a younger audience. Yes. So um, I didn't want to go in either direction. I didn't want to commit in either direction. I didn't want to make this explicitly a kids game, and I also didn't want to go in the direction of making it like a grim dark you know a, adults only it has to be evil blah 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 because that is a, a another common interpretation so i was very happy to get not just a few comments from people saying how they liked how they could see it going in any direction where it could be a fun and whimsical make-believe campaign or it could be something a little bit darker or it could be something like super grim and I, honestly i'm glad i i succeeded in that because that was important to me i didn't want to force anybody to see it in in one direction because that's kind of anti neverland to me is that <laughs> neverland is is whatever the person who sees neverland wants it to be so that's that's kind of what it should be Okay, uh, one one fun question. Um, uh, if you had to fight the crocodile or the pirates, who would you choose? It, oh it, my gosh, the pirates, absolutely. Because the croc is just hungry. The croc just wants to eat whatever it can get its hands on. It's not gonna stop until it eats you. But the pirates have a code and that can be exploited. So I would, I would try my hand with the pirates. <laughs> so is there uh, anything, um, that I haven't mentioned to you any any information or details that you want to mention about about this game just that I'm really excited to share it with people because it's something that's so important to me um, for such a long time so it's really special that I get to share it with people um, and that I'm very very excited to share with everyone uh, the d10 version because that's my original system and I think it 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 really fits a lot with this. So I'm just excited and happy okay. that people like it. <laughs> when when do you see the D10 system being finished by? Like maybe in the fall or? Oh, yeah, probably, probably end of summer, actually. I would say sometime in August. Okay, all right. I, uh, so besides drive to RPG, is there anyone else, if anyone else wants to um, take a, a closer look at the work, is there any other site that they can check out? Yeah, absolutely. If you go to superdylan.com, which is my at everywhere, Instagram and Twitter and all of that. If you go to superdylan.com, you can see um, all of the previous play tests uh, that are on video and some of them are in podcast format. You can also see um, things I've written about my thought process on deconstructing the uh, the book and stuff like that. So there's, and, and interviews about it and other things. So there's a ton of stuff that you can uh, see if you really want to like dig in. Excellent. I will do my best to put the information in the description below. Um, thank you very much. Um, I'm so glad that I got to talk to you about this and uh, please everyone, it's only $5. And I think even right now with Christmas in July. It's on drive sale. Yes, it's on sale. Yeah. You, you, can't, you can't lose, can't lose. It's, it's great. Um, yes, yeah. everyone, thank you very much and stay tuned for more content.